Welcome to day 12 of Immerse. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. The guards did a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter joined them there. The servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, This man is one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted. This must be one of them, because he is a Galilean too. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times. Peter left the courtyard and wept bitterly. The guards in charge of Jesus began mocking him and beating him. They blindfolded him and said, Prophesy to us, who hit you that time? And they hurled all sorts of terrible insults at him. At daybreak, all the elders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Jesus was led before this high council, and they said, Tell us, are you the Messiah? But he replied, If I tell you, you won't believe me. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the high place of power at God's right hand. They all shouted, So you are claiming to be the Son of God. And he replied, You say that I am. Why do we need any of the witnesses, they said? We ourselves heard him say it. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. They began to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, You have said it. Pilate turned to the leading priest and to the crowd and said, I find nothing wrong with this man. Then they became insistent. But he is causing riots by teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, is he a Galilean? Pilate asked. When they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas, because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction, and Herod happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus because he had heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. He asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer. Meanwhile, the leading priests and teachers of religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. Then Pilate called together the leading priests and the other religious leaders along with the people, and he announced his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence, and find him innocent. Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty, so I will have him flogged and then I will release him to you. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd. With one voice they shouted, Kill him and release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas was in prison for taking part in insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, 
But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, he demanded, why? What crime has he committed? I have found no reason to sentence him to death, so I will have him flogged, and then I will release him to you. But the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. As they requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have not borne a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. The criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leader scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is really God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested. Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. By this time it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until it was three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd came to see the crucifixion and saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish High Council, but he had not agreed with, with the decisions and actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. This was done late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation as the Sabbath was about to begin. As his body was taken away, the women from Galilee followed and saw the tomb where his body was placed. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments 
to anoint his body. But by the time they were finished, the Sabbath had begun. So they rested as required by law. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there, puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stopping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there in the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and the other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some of the women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to sea, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people! You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us, since it's getting late. So he went home with them, and as they sat down to eat, he took bread and blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. They said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour... They were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and the others who had gathered with them who said, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two men from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road, and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. 
Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's actually me. Touch me and make sure that I'm not a ghost, because ghosts don't have bodies, as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still, they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. And then he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said, Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent, and you are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with the power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany, and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. That's the conclusion of Luke's first letter to Theophilus.